Hello, today we're going to be talking about spies, the actual role of spies, and we'll be making a link to topics discussed in other videos and how this applies to spy in particular. Now before we begin, you should try and forget everything you've seen about spies in other videos, including my own because they suck. Now just like my medic video, this is not a guide on the basics to spy, so I assume you're fairly familiar with most mechanics. Now for this video, I'm going to be talking about the applications of spy in competitive, however, Unlike most classes, the competitive spy and pub spy are very similar in terms of gameplay, so everything you learn can be applied to public servers. Now the major difference is in the thought process. Competitive spy is a lot less flashy and you'll probably pull off less kills overall. In pubs, you're often trying to outsmart one player to get a kill. Now in competitive, you're trying to outsmart 9 players who are telepathically linked and instantly know where you are the second one person sees you, so your execution has to be a little different. The biggest difference is also in the mindset of players. In regular servers, you often get kills as spy by looking for the best opportunity for a kill and going for it. Against a team, however, when you see a good opportunity to act on, they know you do too. Now we're going to get around to asking ourselves the following question. What makes a good spy? And let me tell you straight away that the ability to perform flashy kills and gimmicky strategies do not make you a good player. Being able to trick stab, matter or stab, or even 360 ambi shots do not make you a good player. There are only two things that make you a good spy player. Number one being getting the right kill at the right time. And number two, being able to communicate a situation and reading ahead. The second aspect is non-existent in pubs, but it's really important. But let's get to the first point. Getting three random kills in a row on irrelevant classes means nothing if their medic and demo ubers in and kills their entire team. In that situation, going in for a play on their demo or medic would have been more effective at controlling the game. Now I understand it's not as easy as, let me get a med pick, so as spy you often have to rely on a couple environmental cues to get kills, and if not, ask your team to create them. Now for example, one of the most powerful and effective plays you can do as a spy is coordinate a soldier distraction while you go in for an important kill. In application it's rather simple. You ask your soldier to bomb their team so they're distracted, and you simply uncloak and go for the kill. Sometimes it ends with you getting a kill, sometimes it ends with their soldier getting a kill, and sometimes it ends with nobody getting a kill, and that's fine. Now that we understand that, let's get into some high level mind games. If I'm telling you about this play, it's because it's a fairly common and predictable one. It will work on players with poor awareness, but seasoned teams know that a soldier bomb normally comes with a spy play and will turn their backs immediately. Now this is where the mind game and outthinking your opponent comes in. If you know your enemy will be searching for you during a soldier bomb, take the opportunity to get another pick, kill their sniper, or pick their soldier. That means like your flank could be able to just overwhelm a place that their soldier is guarding and just overwhelm their team completely. Again, this type of mind game is non-existent in pub servers because players don't really know how to react to these situations, often leaving you with free backstabs. Basically, to be a good spy, you have to think in the head of your enemies. If you think they are expecting you to do a certain play, do a different one. The more unpredictable you are, the better spy you will become. This is what sets top platinum spies like Akuma, Stabby, and Deer far above the rest. They understand mind games and know how to get the kills that matter, and not the kill that you think they're going to be going for. Now you have to understand that your neighbor down the street isn't a better hockey player than Stanley Cup winner Sidney Crosby just because he shows himself getting a lot of goals in street hockey. In essence, spy players who do not venture into competitive are essentially skill cap at a certain level and will never be able to understand higher strategies. Now let's talk about the application of disguises and how they tie into gameplay. First and foremost, disguises are incredibly bad and do not fool anyone. You usually have less than a half of a second to act before getting killed when you're spotted. It's incredibly easy to spot spies in disguises, even by the most basic of players, so you absolutely should not be relying on disguises. Instead, you should be hiding in places where the enemy will usually not be checking and relying on blind spots and decloaks to get quick kills. You can debate as much as you want about how you think disguises are able to fool people, but as you play against better players, it's a very common team strategy to spy check everyone they see, no matter the class. This forces you to think really smart about your plays. Something to mention as well is that lower teams often have very loud and cluttered comms, so you may be able to get away with a kill you normally wouldn't otherwise have, just because they don't hear you. Now let's expand to the second point, which is how to be effective beyond getting kills and how to think ahead. Now as you may well know, the spy has this cloak feature which allows him to get behind enemy lines and remain undetected. As the only person on your team who can do this, you gain a tremendous advantage, which is the ability to tell your team what the other team is planning. For example, it's a much better play to stay alive as a spy, feeding your team information about the other team's movement than just to go in and try to get a kill without an opening. Now why is this so important? Most maps have several different paths for pushing a point and several different ways to hold a point. If your team is holding at one entrance, it'd be rather unfortunate for their team to blind spot push you from another path and wipe your entire team because you weren't aware. 
giving information to your team about what you think the other team is going to be doing is so crucial since your team will get a few seconds to rotate or, put, or position themselves better. Similarly for a push, it would be wise to warn your team about a soldier hiding in a corner or a sniper playing all the way back waiting for your medic. As well, you can communicate things like the enemy uber charge percentage just by hovering over the medic. This ties into my last video which is about counting ubers and how to hold accordingly. Now again, it's up to you to react on these certain situations. Is staying alive and feeding information more important than getting a kill? It just depends on the situation. Now the biggest step towards improving is taking this information and using it to think for yourself. The worst thing you can do is watch someone else play spy and copy them because you won't have the same thought process. Instead, break all these preconceived quote unquote ways to play spy and learn to think for yourself and think ahead. Get in the minds of other players and decide what the better play is. This is obviously only possible by only playing spy and testing the waters of competitive. It's not that hard at a basic lobby level and anyone can do it. Even with a couple lobbies played, you're already better than someone who only plays Valve or community servers because you're playing on an entirely different metagame which forces you to be smarter and a more unpredictable player. Now I believe this covers the groundworks for smart spy thinking. If you have any comments or feedback, please let me know. It's incredibly important and I usually read every comment. As well, I usually appreciate those who leave a like so I can't thank you enough. I also want to quickly state that the turnout for my stream last week was really incredible. Thank you everyone who watched. I run an educational stream where I dedicate time to reviewing newer player gameplay and giving them team building and personal skill advice. As well, I like doing raffles and stuff like that so if, if this is interesting to you, feel free to drop by. It's on to you. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys.